So you want to become a virtual assistant. Well, I'm excited to share with you my thoughts on becoming a virtual assistant. I'm Tanya Sutherland, and what I'm gonna share with you today in this outline is these questions, and I'll get them answered for you. Who is a VA, or who becomes a virtual assistant? What services can a virtual assistant offer? When do virtual assistants get paid and how? Where do VAs find clients? And why do VAs need a marketing plan? Plus as well, I'm gonna talk a bit about how do VAs grow their businesses because that's really important. And these are the top questions I get asked all the time. So you may be wondering who is Tanya Sutherland? Why am I on stage here today to teach you this? A uh, little bit about me, I was a secretary for 15 years in the corporate world um, back in 1982, and I was a legal secretary. I also worked for the medical officer of health at the health unit, so I did quite a few different secretarial jobs. I've been a virtual assistant business owner for 22 years. In 1997, I started up mediumage.com. And you know what? Helping others is the thing that gets my juices flowing. And so that's when I created vanetworking.com. I'm the market leader in the virtual assistant industry since 2003. And yeah, I feel like I know the industry so I can talk to you about it here. A little bit more on a personal level, my story how I ever got into becoming a virtual assistant it started out when I went through a divorce. Uh, I was left with three young children, ages three, six, and 10 to support, you know, find food, shelter, and uh, everything for them. I went back to school, University of BC at nights to uh, pick up my internet marketing certificate and a multimedia certificate at the time. Push ahead a little bit more, I went bankrupt trying to keep up with all my bills. Um, raising three children on your own is, is very expensive. And uh, yeah, I ended up going bankrupt. But top it all off, I got laid off from my current admin job, which was crazy. So what I did was I took all the uh, clients, they actually went bankrupt, the company I was working for, and I took all their clients and offered to do their work for free hoping that they would stay on with me as clients remotely. And most of them did. So that's how my VA business got started. And I've been doing that since 1997, yes. And it has done me well. Uh, I'm a normal person. I have a lot of freedoms being a virtual assistant. I can travel whenever I want, jump on my bike and go wherever I want. So there's a lot of fun things about being a virtual assistant. It gives you the freedom and flexibility to do stuff that you've always wanted to do and maybe couldn't. I met a nice guy a couple of years ago. In fact, it's our anniversary year today. So happy anniversary, Marv. He's been great. I even had two lovely grandchildren. So being a virtual assistant has done me well and given me the flexibility to do just about anything I ever wanted. So really cool career choice if it's something that might be of interest to you. And yes, I'm from Canada. As you can see, maybe from my accent, or possibly it's the flag in the background. Okay, so let's answer that first question, who is a virtual assistant? A virtual assistant, which you'll find people call VAs, is a business owner, okay? You're an independent business owner. You file taxes, you do your books, you file taxes. Who remotely provides and remotely means you don't go into their office to work with their, your clients. You actually have your own office and you work remotely online. Maybe you log into their email. We'll get into stuff like this later, but you work remotely from your home office and you provide administrative, technical, and or creative support services to other business owners. You not necessarily provide all those services, but one or any of those services you could provide, and I'll go into that a little bit too for you. But let's talk more about a, who is a VA and why clients love virtual assistants. They love them because they are cost effective. There's no overhead hiring a VA. 
They don't have to pay for workers' comp or dental plans or vacation or EI. They just have no overhead. They don't even have to provide you with a computer or a workstation or nothing. So it's really cost effective for a client to hire a virtual assistant. As well, they get full business support as needed. So they don't have someone sitting in the office all day doing nothing if there's no work to be done. They just need you to do work when they need it done. And that's kind of handy. So most clients will hire a VA for like 20 hours a month or something like that. The other reason clients love virtual assistants is because it reduces their stress. They're not so overwhelmed because a virtual assistant takes on those little tasks that have been driving that client nuts. Maybe cleaning out their email, getting rid of the spam, or maybe it's entering all their business cards into a database that they don't want to do themselves. There's a lot of little tasks that business owners do in their business that a VA can take over, including their bookkeeping, just about anything. And we'll get into that a bit more shortly. Clients also love virtual assistants because it frees up their time so they can get back to doing what they love most. Making money, right? Or creating product or coaching, whatever the client likes doing. It frees them up having a virtual assistant. It also frees them up so that they can go on vacation and do other things as well. So clients love having a virtual assistant for that reason. And these are great selling points if you're a virtual assistant on convincing your lead that you want to take on as a client to become one of your clients. So who becomes a virtual assistant? Anyone with admin skills, okay? You've got secretaries, office managers, personal executives, assistants, project managers, paralegals, anyone that has good admin skills. And then you've got creative or technical skills. Those type of people, that would be like marketers, IT providers, tech people, graphic designers, web developers. Those all fall into this bracket of creative or technical skills. The most important thing is anyone with a passion to make money online. These could be internet savvy entrepreneurs like realtors, teachers, coaches, writers, work at home moms. They just need to have a skill set, and most of them do, a laptop and an internet and a desire to make it happen. The most important thing about becoming a VA is finding that skill set that you can market online to help clients in their business. And the reason I love becoming a VA is because you can work the way you want. You can work whenever you want. You don't have to have a set nine to five time when you're working. When I had the kids and they were small, they were in bed by 7.30 or so. I started work, I worked from eight till two in the morning. So you can work your hours around to working whenever you want because all the client is interested in is you getting the job done. They don't care what hour of the day you did it. So it's just your turnaround time. So you can work whenever you want, wherever you want. I have my home office, but many times I'll go down to one of those co-work spaces and meet up with others and work there. And if I'm on holidays, I can even be working at the beach. <laughs> so you can work whenever and wherever you want. As well, you get to choose who you work with. So you can work with whoever you want. If you don't like working for realtors or lawyers, don't ever work for them. It's your choice. It's your business. You get to work with whoever you want. And I love that uh, part about becoming a virtual assistant is that you get to work the way you want. And there's a lot of freedom in that. Because you're the boss. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about working remotely and some stats that I found regarding freelancers. And I got these stats on Upwork. Freelancing Work VA has grown from 3.7 million to 56.7 million in five years. 
Okay, that's craziness. That's It's becoming so cool that you can work from home and that people are accepting it, right? A lot of people are doing it now, so it's a great way to work. There's no shortage of work, working as a virtual assistant. In fact, according to this study, Americans spent more than 1 billion hours per week outsourcing to freelancers. That's amazing. That's a lot of money. The reason I love being a virtual assistant is because it's non-competitive. Each virtual assistant I know, each business is unique. I know a virtual assistant, all she does is bookkeeping. Another one, all she does is uh, images in Canva and does image marketing. There's another VA, she only works for veterinarians. We're all different and we're all unique. We all have our own skill sets, so it's not a very competitive industry. There's freedom, stability, and flexibility, which is attractive, working remotely. Like I said, you can work how you want, when, where, with whoever. VAs typically have four to six clients versus employees. Like you guys are all employees right now. You have one boss. If you get fired, you're done. Where if you're a virtual assistant, you lose a client, you might still have five left. Okay, so you're not out on the street. But that's one difference of having your own business and working for um, four to six clients instead of working for just one boss. There's more stability, in my opinion. And again, it's flexible. It gives you the opportunity to do work that you are passionate about or find meaningful. And that's attractive. Who doesn't want to work doing what they love? Makes it a lot easier to get up in the morning, that's for sure. Now this is from that same study, and these are some of the things freelancers in their own words have said, and you're probably in one of these scenarios yourself. Like me, it was like divorce, left with three children, bankruptcy, you know, we all have our reasons to want to work from home. I mean, I couldn't afford to put three children in daycare. I couldn't get a job that would pay enough to cover that and my rent and my food. But there's a lot of reasons people want to work from home, be it illnesses, mental issues. This one, I have children and my wife works full time. This gives me the freedom to take care of my ch children and avoid full time daycare. Yeah, there's lots of different reasons why you're unable to work for a traditional employer on an ongoing basis and how freelancing as a virtual assistant can give you the flexibility you need. So I'd love to hear some of your reasons you want to become a virtual assistant after the event. That would be cool. Let's get into what services a virtual assistant can offer, because you're probably wondering. There's a lot of generalized services that you'll get 30 to $50 an hour for doing these services, and maybe some of these might be something you can do. Email management, calendar scheduling, booking appointments, travel arrangements, for every client needs is travel arrangements, event management, customer service. That's a great, customer service is a great skill set to have if you're good with people. Proofreading, formatting documents, transcription, PowerPoint presentations, research, lead generation, social media scheduling and monitoring, blog management, moderating, Facebook groups, the list goes on and on and on. There's a lot of generalized services that you can do for your clients. And like I said, you'll probably get 30 to $50 an hour for this. It's such a thrill when my VA goes in and organizes my email and just has like three emails that I have to respond to when I wake up in the morning in my inbox. The rest have all been filed away or put in spam. It's a great service. I love it. There's other services that a VA can offer too, and this is just a generalized. But there's a specialized high-end services, and this can get you into the six-figure income. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But these are more advanced services that you most likely have had to take courses on or gone back to school to get. Things like bookkeeping, web design services, video or podcast services, putting on webinars, email marketing, 
building a list, uh, doing all the funnels and stuff like that that comes with building a list. Product launches is huge right now. VAs that specialize in product launches are probably got a full client base right now. Maybe you do Pinterest or Facebook or Instagram ads, or you just manage Facebook for people. There's graphic design, there's image marketing, affiliate management, shopping cart management, like Infusionsoft, Entreport, things like that. Copywriting skills, that's important. If you can write, you've got specialized high-end service there. Yeah, well, I'm always looking for copywriters. Project management, real estate. If you're a realtor or you worked as a secretary as a, for a realtor, you've got special high-end services that you can offer. And again, they're going to give you the six-figure income that you hear others talk about because you can charge a lot more money. I charge $95 an hour for my internet marketing services. If you're a member at my vanetworking.com, a free member, there's a 200 plus services worksheet on the inside that you can download and it has all of these services written on them for you, okay? Plus more. It's amazing what you can offer as a virtual assistant. So pricing methods, let's talk about that. First of all, you're gonna to have to figure out your hourly rate, which is probably gonna run between $30 to $50 an hour if you're a general administrative virtual assistant. It's really gonna matter where you live, um, what your goals are, like how much do you wanna make a year, right? You put that into the equation, plus your operating costs. Some people's operating costs will be more than others, depending where they live or how many computers they have or you know, are they working in their home or are they, you know, renting a office space? It really depends. But you take your salary goals plus your operating costs and you divide it by how many hours you can work. And that will give you your hourly rate. So let's take an example here. Let's say your goal is 50000 I want to make for the year. And you figure out all your operating costs, like having your website, building your list, having a backup system. Maybe you need to have a scheduling program. You might need to have a sauna or something for project management. There's a lot of different things that can go into your operating costs, but let's just throw a number of 8,000 out there. That's in between. Then you divide that number by how many hours you can work in a year. And I just chose 48 weeks because I'd like to have four weeks holidays <laughs> and you know two weeks good holidays and maybe two weeks for sick days or stat days and stuff like that so 48 weeks is what I chose and I don't want to work more than 30 hours a week I'm gonna have work on my own business too uh, things like doing bookkeeping and things like that if I don't don't outsource it so I only want to bill out 30 hours a week if you do that equation, it figures out your hourly rate to around 40 bucks an hour. And if you go to vanetworking.com forward slash free, there is a pricing formula worksheet inside that you can fill in all the blanks and it's gonna figure out your hourly rate for you. But that's how you figure it out in a nutshell. Now there's different ways to uh, get paid. You can charge hourly. That's probably the one way most people pay. Charging hourly is a great way to get started with a new client. They can just buy a couple of hours with you to see if it fits. And if it does, then you can move them on to a retainer plan. And what I love about retainer plans is the client gets a little discount if they buy a retainer plan. But what you get is you get paid up front so you don't have to be chasing them afterwards, right? You make them prepay this retainer plan at the beginning of each month. Okay, so I took an example of mine here. I charge $90 hourly. They can buy prepaid hours anytime they want, one at a time, doing this way. By the way, I always get paid up front. I never do any work until I'm paid up front. Now to encourage them to pay up front, 
what I do is I'll offer a discount. So say they're going to get a 10 hour retainer, that would normally cost 10 times 90, $900. But I'm letting them save 10% by signing up at the beginning of the month and paying cash and they'll get 10% discount. They'll only have to pay $810. And the same goes up here, you know, save 18% if they go for a 25 hour retainer. I give them a big jump if they go with a, a 40 hour retainer. I give them 25% off. Plus I give them a one hour marketing consultation because I'm an internet marketing specialist. Okay, you could do that for your own business too, depending on what you niche your business in. But I find retainers are probably the best way to get your clients on board in the beginning. And then once you find out what you're doing for them and what they require, you can sometimes offer them package plans or even one-off projects. And you need a little bit of experience to do package plans. We have a company menu worksheet that you can grab here at vanetworking.com forward slash free as well. And basically what it does is it's a worksheet where if you do a small project in the beginning, if you're a brand new virtual assistant, say you go and you post 10 posts on their Facebook page. It took you 30 minutes. Mark that down so that you know how long it took you. Next time, maybe you had to go in and deal with email, right? How long it took to deal with so many emails. Uh, maybe you're doing bookkeeping. How long did it take for you to enter 50 entries? Okay, but after a while, you'll have a company menu worksheet saying, this is the job and this is how long it took me. And now you can start figuring out how much your package plans will cost. And clients really love package plans because one, they see what they're getting for their dollar. So for 995 bucks, I'm getting the initial assessment call and strategy documentation plan. I'm getting my list set up and imported, a lead sales page to collect emails, a branded newsletter template, and a seven day autoresponder series is included. So the client loves these because they know what they're getting for their money. And you can put together any kind of package you want once you know how long it takes for you to do things. The one good thing about packages is as you get doing these over and over again, you get quicker and it takes less time, but you're still getting $995 for it. So packages are a great way to get extra money for your time. You're not really necessarily going on your hourly rate anymore. And the cool thing with package pricing is Let's say it took me seven hours to do this package according to my company menu, but I'm charging $9.95 for it. So I'm getting a little bit extra because it's for what I know. It's a really specialized package. I know how to do this stuff. And also I'll get quicker doing my packages and I'm really getting more than my $90 per hour by putting something into a package. Okay, so that's packages. I wanted to talk about another way to get a higher dollar and that's by niching yourself with specialized high-end services. So let me give you an example of that because when you all start out, yes, you'll all start out probably at the 30 to $50 range. But what I want you to be doing is getting up at the 80, $90 range per hour so that you're making more money or even don't have to work as much, right? Because you can work less hours. So here's an example, working a 30 hour work week. If you're a general virtual assistant at $40 an hour, that's 1200 a week or 62.4K a year. Now, if you had specialized high-end services where you've got a niche in bookkeeping and you're working at $75 an hour, that equals $2,250 a week, or we're over the top, we're in the six figure, 117,000 a year. By niching yourself in something that you do well, be it copywriting, 
looking after websites. Maybe you are the PowerPoint queen. Everybody has to go get you to do their PowerPoints because you are awesome at them. Niching yourself can bring you that six-figure income. Here's another example. I just wanted to throw out a couple of different examples here for you. Uh, again, working a 30-hour work week, the general virtual assistant is going to get $40 an hour, $1,200 a week, or $62,400 a year. Let's say you had a niche package like I had for $995. Okay, maybe you're doing Pinterest ads or bookkeeping or video editing, whatever your niche little package is. If you sold four of these a month, just four, you'd be making almost 4,000 a week or 2,006 a year. These niche packages are really cool. I really like using them because I can make a lot of money, honey. <laughs> okay, so I've talked about how you can get bigger dollars as a virtual assistant. You can specialize. Uh, there's different ways you can specialize. A generalized VA that is a Jackie of all trade is a very huge asset to a company. Maybe they can project management. Uh, they can look after all the other virtual assistants in a company. That can be very beneficial to a client. There's professional VAs. That's a niche. And by professional, I mean you only work for lawyers or you only work for nutrition coaches or you only work for realtors. There's technical VAs. These are VAs that do all that back-end e-commerce stuff, maybe look after your WordPress, your shopping carts, things like that. You've got bookkeeping VA. That's a specialty in itself, knowing how to do books. There's marketing VAs out there. There's social media VAs, web design VAs, graphic designers. There's all different kinds of ways you can specialize and get that top dollar. And if you really want to get a bigger top dollar than what I've already talked about by niching yourself, you might want to set up an agency where you bring on all of these different virtual assistants as subcontractors. And then you can take on lots of clients because you've got a huge team of virtual assistants to help you. And if you create an agency, well, the world is your oyster because the money coming in is unlimited. The size of your agency is. Okay, so that's how they get paid. Oh, I wanted to talk a bit about how to get paid now. Like I said before, always get paid up front. Never do any work for a client until they have paid you up front. Okay, we're working virtually. It's known in the industry that this is how virtual assistants get paid. Even if you go to Upwork or something like that, you have to prepay a deposit down before you can hire someone from there. So receiving payments. Easiest way is through a website payment through PayPal or Stripe. PayPal is the norm nowadays. And then there's Stripe which takes credit cards. It really depends on where you live, but this is North America. That's usually what most people use. You can do email money transfers. Those are lovely because you can't get chargebacks on those, right? Where PayPal and Stripe, you could get a chargeback on them. Check. Checks still work, but don't do any work until it clears. Okay, make sure it clears. It's like cash as long as it clears. And of course there's cash. Who doesn't love cash? If you're working locally with people, uh, cash is always great or Square. Uh, it's a cool little app that you can get on your phone and you can swipe a credit card right there in person with a person. So that's how you get paid. Now, where do VAs find clients? Well, these are the three best ways that I know for people to find clients. First is your hot market. Now, who is that? That's your family, your friends, your past employers, sports organizations, clubs, your church, word of mouth locally. I was sitting at a hockey game one time, my son's hockey game, and someone asked me what I did. And I says, oh, I'm a virtual assistant and I love helping 
my clients turn their clicks into cash for them on the web. And he says, oh, that's really cool. I know someone that might be able to use your services. And next thing I knew, he was introducing me to another fellow and I had a job right there at the hockey game and that fella introduced me to another person through word of mouth. So it's amazing who your hot market is, right? Just even the people at your church, you never know who. There's so many people at church nowadays that need a virtual assistant. And make sure your family and friends understand what you do for a living. Talk to them, explain to them so that they know what you do. You are a virtual assistant and I help clients with their bookkeeping services so they don't have any tax problems at the end of the year. Make it very clear to your family and friends what you do because they're your hottest market. Even past employers can be a hot market. You know, they already know you're great at the way you work. Maybe they'll take you on virtually. Okay, so that's the, the easiest way to get clients is through people you know and people that know you because the trust issue is already there. I like going to in-person events, local networking groups, meetups, things like that locally, even some trade shows locally, you know, how they have the little Soho trade shows, put up a booth in there. That's really cool. You can get to know a lot of people locally and give a, a lot of information about your business. But local networking groups, there's never a virtual assistant in them. And every one of these people are business owners and they need virtual assistants. So like you're like a commodity in there. Everybody's all over you. Oh, can you do this? Can you do that for me, right? Local is great. Plus you get to meet them in person. I feel that meeting in person is the easiest way to gain trust with a potential client. You know, there's even those co-working spaces where you can go and work with a bunch of other business owners. Every one of those business owners probably needs a virtual assistant and business pop-ins, all kinds of things. Look at conferences, for example. I knew a VA once and she worked for speakers. That was her target market. She did all kinds of things for speakers and she would go to this huge speaker conference, fly across the world, to go to it because every time she went she'd get five to ten new clients just going there she was just a virtual assistant there and i shouldn't say just a virtual assistant she was the only virtual assistant there because the rest of them were speakers and they all needed her help so it was like the best investment she did every year she'd get her whole lineup of new clients every year yeah it cost her a couple thousand to go to the conference but it was sure worth it in the long run for her so attending conferences where your target markets hang out, great idea. You can also find clients virtually. We have a high quality virtual assistant job board at vainsiders.com. That's a great way to find clients. I don't recommend going to Upwork or Freelancer, those because you're competing with third world and you're not gonna get your 30 to $50 an hour off of those job boards. Stick to the job boards that are specifically for virtual assistants, and those are under virtual assistant organizations. There's ours, there's a couple others out there. Yeah, we have a real high quality job board, and just by becoming a member of our VA Insiders Club, you get access to this job board. So it's great. And these are clients that know you're worth $30 to $50, right? Because we screen them. Another place you can find clients is Facebook or LinkedIn groups. If you work for nutrition coaches, go find a Facebook or a LinkedIn group that the nutrition coaches hang out at and start being helpful in there, answering questions for them. You know, if they have a question on how to do something, like how to, how to make a checklist in Word and export it into PDF for their members, you should be right on that and explaining how to do it because the more you are helpful in a group, the more you'll get noticed. And eventually, people will hire you. I've hired out of my groups, my bookkeepers, my graphic designers, my web designer, my copywriters. I hire them through my groups because I always see them helping everybody else. And I think, hey, they know what they're doing because I see what they're doing, right? And I want them on my team. So that's the people I hire. 
And don't forget to go after your mentor idol pursuits either. I remember back when I was first started, I wanted to be Gene Simmons, you know, off a of kiss, his virtual assistant, because he is such a great marketer. And I pursued him a little bit. I never got caught up with him. Probably 10 years ago wasn't a good time to try and do it. Maybe nowadays with Twitter and everything, he would notice me, right? But uh, had I ever got him to notice me, wow, wouldn't that have been cool? I could have been Gene Simmons' virtual assistant. And don't forget about the follow-up. Every time you put someone, you talk to someone about your business, put them in a spreadsheet be it from your hot market, in person, or virtually. And then follow up three to four times with them. And if you're trying to get to know someone virtually, you know, maybe the first thing is commenting on their blog post. So maybe that's, you check that off, I did that. And then next time it's, you comment in their Facebook group or whatever, check, did that. And eventually, maybe you can get to a private message with them after a couple of things doing stuff with them. That's the follow-up, guys. Without follow-up, you probably won't land that client. So you gotta keep on to them. You gotta keep checklists and mark down every time you contact them, how you contact them, phone, message, email, whatever. And eventually, you can funnel them into your list even, if, you have a, if you're building your list, which is another whole topic. <laughs> But uh, yeah, follow-up is important if you want to land the clients. Now, I want to talk for a minute about why do VAs need a marketing plan? Because without one, we would go broke. Because <laughs> a marketing plan that you implement will equal a full client roster. So you really need to have a marketing plan. And I'll talk about this for a second, guys. But uh, you need a marketing plan that you're going to implement if you want to have a full client roster. So there's a few ways that you can market yourself online. Let's start actually direct marketing. These are things that you do from your office, um, usually locally, like advertising in a local newspaper or a coffee chat magazine or something. You're going to local networking events, meetups, chamber of commerce, you're getting referrals, maybe you're doing walk in to businesses, handing them a few chocolates and a flyer and say, I'll get back to you in a couple of days, but read this over. I'd really love to talk to you about virtual assistance and how it can be a great return on your investment. But that's direct marketing. And then there's online marketing, which I tend to like to do more. I'm virtual, I don't like going out so much and getting dressed and I, I love being in my casual PJs or whatever I'm wearing through the day uh, and not having to put makeup on and I like doing my marketing online I find it simpler marketing online is as simple as you should have a website uh, doing a bit of search engine marketing with that which is blogging all different kinds of things like that we teach all this in our VA insiders club but all of these things you can learn, all right? You can learn how to build a list to retain your clients and find new clients. Social media, wow, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, so many social networks out there. If you can focus on one or two and be really good at them, you can really fill up your client list. And there's other ways to market yourself too. There's paid ads, there's videos, there's webinars, you can do joint ventures with other virtual assistants, say you offer social media services, but you don't offer web development. John offers web development. You hook up with John, you'll do all his social media, he'll do all your web development, and you cross your clients, cross paths, and you get access to both the clients. But you do need a marketing plan, and I don't want you to be fearful of it. Find something that works. If you love going out to networking events and you're an extrovert and you love going to the Chamber of Commerce every week, do that, okay? Find something that you enjoy doing. If you're a social butterfly, then that's you. Go to those Chamber of Commerce meetings. 
Make sure they're an asset though. Whatever you're doing, make sure it's an asset. And going to a chamber of commerce meeting or a BNI or a meetup or something, those are real assets and they have a return for your investment of time. And then once you figure out what you love doing, just rinse and repeat that over and over and over and over again. Maybe find another networking event, do it again and again. You really just have to find one marketing thing and do it really well, right? And then just keep doing it over and over again. Another example might be list building. Maybe you enjoy writing. So you're writing something out to your list every other day. And that can be a real asset to you because if you're writing a blog post or uh, sending out an email to your newsletter, you can have lots of calls to action in there. So that can be an asset to your business. And just keep doing it over and over again. Set up that schedule that I'm going to blog 10 times a month and I'm going to send out my email twice a week. Don't have a fear of marketing. Just find something that you enjoy doing. That's an asset. Gives you a return on your investment. And then just rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Do it over and over and over, over again. And you'll always have a full client base. So how do VAs grow their businesses? Offer high-end services. And I talked about that before. That's one way to get out of the generalist mode is to offer high-end services that you can charge more money for. Become an agency. Outsource, subcontract, so that you can bring on more clients. If you only have time for four to six clients as a solopreneur, if you bring on more to your team, you might have room for 100 clients, which means more money for you, right? That's how you can grow your business. You can add passive income to your business. I briefly talked about this list building or affiliate marketing. If you're emailing your list every couple of days, you can pop in an affiliate link and if they buy through that link, you've made some money. So there's lots of ways that VAs can grow their business. Most important though, I encourage you to find a virtual assistant community for business support and specialized training. Again, vainsiders.com, we've got that. Do talk to me if you ever need help finding a community, a virtual assistant community. It's the virtual assistants that get together with their groups. It's camaraderie, right? And just knowing you can go in and have a coaching class with other virtual assistants that have the same challenges, same obstacles as you, same roadblocks, and you work through them as a group. It's great business support. And when you do work from home alone, you need those people. We don't have that lunchroom to go to anymore at the office. You may find working virtually that you'll think, oh heck, I haven't went out of the office or the house all week. And that does happen to a lot of virtual assistants. And that is the reason you need to have that VA community for business support, for mental support, personal support. You'll meet your best friends who are also VAs. And uh, anyways, thank you. Don't forget to grab your free VA resources at vanetworking.com forward slash free. I'll take any questions in the chat area, but I thank you so much for meeting up with me today.